You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Although Hidden Traps is not officially released until August 1st, you can pre-order your paperback or ebook copy now from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit BlackWolfPublications.com for more details. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put Invent Help in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Hey everyone, this is Jenny Earhart with the Southern Sisters Radio Show, the show for Southern women and the men who adore them. We love to chat every week about Southern culture, Southern food, hospitality, basically everything that makes up the Southern lifestyle. Join us this Saturday at noon and again on Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on AM 920 The Answer. I'm in Wins World and I love it. This is Dennis Prager and I am in Wins World and I love it. My friends, nothing goes better with some football and beer than a couple delicious hot dogs. And you're in luck because it is National Hot Dog Day in Wen's World. <laughs> A.K.A. my favorite national food holiday. And that beautiful voice that you're hearing is the one of the only mm. Jenny Earhart. Wow. Welcome back. How are you, Jenny? I'm good, Joey. Thank you. You invited me in today some very high culinary cuisine here. <laughs> this is ultra high here, but nothing better if you are a red-blooded American than a good old-fashioned hot dog. Amen, sister. And no better day to eat it than on National Hot Dog Day. That's right. And you got a couple awesome recipes yeah. or toppings well, or something in between. Yeah. It, 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 you know, we're rocking the boat a little bit. We're getting Ooh. a little crazy with our hot dog toppings. I like it. You know, so you've got the purists that believe that, you know, mustard and relish, that's it. G- good enough for a hot dog. Mm-hmm. But if you like them as much as I do and you want to shake it up every now and then, I think that National Hot Dog Day is a great day to try something new and different. Let's go Pentecostal up in I've here. I've got two brand new hot dog ideas for you. <laughs> Number one, and one of my favorite, is the Tiki Dog. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Sounds islandy. Oh, it is very islandy. And this variation is actually inspired by sort of those bacon wrapped chicken skewers oh. that we have, like at Luau's and things like that. Oh, yeah. What I do is I wrap the hot dog in bacon. 
<laughs> right? When? What's, be- what's better than something wrapped in bacon? Right. Brush it with a little teriyaki sauce, right, before grilling, okay? And then once it's all cooked through and through, I place this glistening glazed frank on a toasted bun, top it with a little diced grilled pineapple, mm. a little chopped red onion, and a little drizzle of some more teriyaki sauce. Wow. Hello. That sounds oh, yeah. awesome. It's just, you know, very fun and fruity. Great for late summer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's my number one favorite, actually, right now, is the Tiki Dog. Now, Another favorite dog of mine, Joey, and just something that's kind of different and out there is the Bacon Jack dog. Have you seen a theme here? Have you noticed both of these dogs have bacon? Bacon, on them? I love it. <laughs> now, if you want to make your own cheese stuffed hot dog, all you have to do is cut it down lengthwise, but don't cut all the way through. Stuff it with Monterey Jack cheese and close it up by wrapping two slices of bacon mm. around the hot dog. Okay, if you're on the grill, it's always a good idea. And we've talked about this actually on your show before. It's a good idea to have the direct heat and the indirect heat portions of your grill. You're going to start this one out on the indirect heat, cook it till it's nice and cooked through, and then move it over to the direct heat to kind of crisp up that bacon around the outside. Okay. Nestle it into a toasted bun. I put a little slice of fresh avocado, maybe a little squeeze of chipotle mayo. And folks, you don't have to buy this in the store. A dollop of mayonnaise and a squirt of sriracha maybe, and kind of whip that together, a little sriracha mayo. Be fabulous. This is a killer Killer dog. Now, all the Southern brothers want to know how the Southern sister, Jenny Earhart, how she buys her hot dogs. Are you brand conscious or are you just whatever's on sale or do you have a personal favorite? You know, I have always loved Hebrew National. Okay. But sometimes I shake it up a little bit. Like, I'll, I'll treat brats almost the same way that I treat mm, hot dogs. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I would do either of these with a good German brat. Um, knock worst even. Ooh. So, uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of an equal opportunity hot dog lover. Oh, that's so good. And in case you missed any of this, there's so much more to be seen. SouthernSistersHome.com. That's right. SouthernSistersHome.com. Click on the blog for the recipes. You can also go and visit me at my Facebook page, Southern Sisters with Jenny Earhart. And this just in, 30% off all Southern Sisters products when you use the promo code SISTERS at Southern Sisters Home. That's right. Oh, we have some great products. Check them out. Yeah, get ahead of the game, folks. <laughs> Jenny, always a pleasure to have you in One's World. Thanks, Joey. Great. Hey, sports fans. We're going to take a look back at week one NFL action to see who is more correct, Radio Griff or the wins. This ought to be fun. Atlanta's unofficial, official NFL pregame show, Wentz World. Or is that officially unofficial? In any case, no lawsuits, please. The topic wheel abides, and with us in Wen's World again is at Radio Griff. Yo, 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 what's up, man? This is like, uh, it's like a holiday. It is a uh, holiday. It's football's back. Yes. It's I like, love it. It's like Christmas and almost fall. Right. The Beautiful time Christmas of year. Christmas in the air, football's back. I mean, you gotta love it. It's the most wonderful time of the year, in my humble opinion. Uh, that's what they say, right? As they say on the internet, IMO, in my opinion. IMO, in my... <laughs> in my opinion, I was very wrong about the Chiefs Patriots game. Dude, that game the other night. I almost texted you cuz you you text me, "Hey man, what's your pick on this game so yeah. you can keep track?" I said the Pats initially, and right before kickoff, I'm kind of sitting there I'm like, "I don't know, man. The Chiefs." And I I came like this close to yeah. texting you back saying, "I yeah. think the Chiefs are going to do it." And sure enough, there go the Chiefs. Yep. I mean, they look good. They sure do. Alex Smith looked like Tom Brady. Alex Smith hasn't people were claiming maybe he's been a uh, sandbagging for the past decade for this one game. Like, he played the best game of his career. Yeah, four touchdowns over 360 yards. Where's that Alex Smith been? You know, well, think about it this year. He's got a stud running back. He does. Brand new. Uh, By the way, thank you, Mr. Kareem Hunt. You got me over 40 points in my first fantasy I have him in one of my leagues as well. Yeah, I love it. What a a starlight pick. Beautiful thing. And Tyreek Hill got me over 20 points also. Yeah. He had a cramp. The Chiefs. Yeah. The Chiefs are for real. They are for real. They're for real. So we're going to go through and do our weekly predictions here. We're both 0-1. We fumbled <laughs> on our first play like Kareem Hunt, but then we're going to rebound and come rebound. back stronger. So uh, week one matchups. Here we go. We've seen the Chiefs-Pats game come and gone. Jets and Bills. Who you oh got? Oh, my goodness. Are the Jets going to win a game this year? I think so. They might win one, a game. It's not going to be this game, though. I got the Bills in this game, man. Easy easy money. New Bills uh, coach. Whole new philosophy up there. They got rid of the uh, Rex Ryan and the Ryan brothers. Bills, I think... Watch out for them in, like, I think two years. Watch out for the Bills. And I like them in this game against the Jets. I'm going to take the upset special. Oh, already going upset special early. Game one, the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets will win and prevail. Todd Bowles and company will beat 
the Buffalo Bills wow. on the road. That's my hot take of the hot week there. Hot take, upset special, all in one. Advantage Griffin. Let's move it on over to the NFC East as my Philadelphia Eagles take on the Washington Redskins. So offensive. Yeah, I... I like the Somebody, uh, somebody's really upset by the by the name yeah, Redskins in the studio right now. <laughs> no, I like the Redskins in this game. I think they're going to roll uh, at home. Uh, yeah, I, Eagles though are going to be better this year. But I like the Redskins at home. I like Kirk Cousins. I think Redskins win. I think the Eagles win this one. I think and hope advantage the wins. Uh, Raiders at Titans. This is a nice little matchup. A nice little Week One game oh, here. Yeah. Oh yeah, two like up and coming teams here. I like the uh, I like the home team here. I, I like the Titans. I think the Raiders though might have kind of a regression this year. I think a lot of things went right last year for them, and they still weren't quite there. So I like the Titans. I think this is the Titans' breakout year. I think the Titans are going to win this division and uh, maybe make a little run in the playoffs until they have to face the Chiefs or the Pats. <laughs> I like the Titans. I'm going to take the Raiders on the road. Advantage the wins. I- I'm feeling bold today. Uh, bold predictions here in Wentz World. It seems that way, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling it, man. I got a nice morning run in, so I'm, I'm feeling the, the blood's flowing, feeling good. Uh, Jack's on the road taking on the Texans. It's hard to bet to bet against the Texans right now, specifically just because of Hurricane Harvey, the relief efforts. They're on fire. They're excited. Uh, who you got in this one? I like Houston, man. Houston strong. Hashtag Houston strong. That's Hashtag right. do it for JJ. Hashtags for Houston. Hashtags for Houston. <laughs> JJ's raising twenties of millions of dollars. It's insane. Uh, yeah, you can't you can't count out the Texan. I assume like they can play right. The field's not flooded, right? Well, yeah, it's a it's a dome, is it not? I think in Houston. So. Yeah, they got all the people out of the way and they're ready to play. I guess. Sure. I mean, I, why I, not? Yeah, Houston strong. I like them. And if they don't play in the dome, they'll play at Osteen's church. There's plenty of room there. <laughs> oh, hot take. Oh, both are wrong. Uh, Cardinals taking on the Detroit Lions. Ooh, man, are the is this the the Cardinals? Are they, are they back this year? Or are they still going to be kind of bad? Are the Lions? Is Stafford with all those millions of dollars? Is he going to be good this year? I don't know, man. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go with Stafford and the Lions at home. I I, I like this is a tough game, man, because I think both these teams are those teams. This is kind of make it or break it years for these teams. Like, are they gonna be playoff contenders? Or are they just gonna be uh, pretenders? Pretenders. pretenders. I right? like that. Yeah, I like the Lions and Stafford with his uh, uh all his uh, big old checkbook he has now. I like Staff. Yeah, for sure. Brewster's millions at home there. Uh, I'll take the Lions as well. Both, both are correct. correct. Uh, Pittsburgh at the. Somewhat impressive Cleveland Browns. I think I got something to say about this team, but you first. Go ahead. Well, the Browns have reports coming out that Miles Garrett might not play, right? Number True. one pick. High ankle sprain. Yeah, not looking good for them. Yep. In, in Cleveland, though, big rivalry game. Steelers. Lots of people are. I've been reading, you know, everyone comes out with their predictions. Who's going to make it the Super Bowl? In a, a sexy pick that's not the Patriots this year is the, are the Steelers from the AFC. Lots of people I see picking the Steelers. To maybe uh, steal the AFC and maybe win the Super Bowl. Whoa. But here's my upset special of the week. Oh, boy. At home. It's a new day in Cleveland. I like the Browns upsetting the Steelers. I got Cleveland, baby. It's a new day. Yes, it is. I will also take Cleveland to win this game, man. I, I feel like Joe Hayden's going to feel a little bit of a homesickness there as he revisits his his old alma mater in the NFL. Both are wrong. Falcons taking on the Shy Town Bears. Man, as much as I want to pick the Bears, and, uh, <laughs> I they're not a very good football team. No. They're one of those teams that might win 3 or 4 games this year. Right. Uh Falcons, I mean are the class of the NFC. Uh, so I I like the Falcons in this game. I think they're going to go up to Chicago and take care of business. I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears. Whoa! I'm feeling bold, man. I got like four or five bold predictions I here. But upset specials. I think we've seen this one Super Bowl hangover already, and I think we're going to see two Super Bowl hangovers. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And uh, the Bears will win their first game at home. Advantage Griffin. Uh, Baltimore taking it to Cincy. Who you got? Yeah, Man, this is another. Uh, the Bengals, are they going to be a team? AJ Green's back now. Uh, they got Joe Mixon running the ball. I mm-hmm. got him on one of my fancy teams. Looking forward to that. I hear good things, right? Uh, uh, are the, the Bengals, they're kind of, to me, in that same class as like the Cardinals or the Lions. Or they can kind of get over the hump this year. It's kind yeah. of like make it or break it year. Right. Marvin Lewis, hot seat maybe. Oh, Who yeah. Who knows? Always on the hot seat, it seems. But I'll still take the Bengals at home. I like the Bengals. I think they're going to bounce back this year. And... Uh, I like the Bengals. Ravens, I don't know. Who's Joe Flacco throwing the ball to? It's got Jeremy Macklin. Now he's got the J-Mac attack. He's like a, a, a third 
your third option on most teams. Yeah, at well, best. on most teams. At best. But, I mean, look, you, you got Danny Woodhead as your running back. You got Jeremy Macklin. I think they're going to have a decent year <laughs> this quite year. quite the weapons, man. Well, there's probably more, but I'm not a big AFC guy. I should have done more homework here. <laughs> like this is what you get with you la- last minute segments. I'm going to go with Baltimore on the road. Oh. I'm feeling it. Oh, I'm feeling the uh, I'm feeling the vibe today, Flacco man. Believer. Advantage the wins. Uh, Colts, uh, a luckless Colt team. Oh my gosh, <laughs> taking on the uh, the Rams. Yeah, Colts. Scott Tolzien. Yeah, it? three career touchdowns. Holy smokes! I like the Rams in this game. I again, I think it's a new day in Los Angeles. St- mm. Not St. Louis, right? Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Jared Goff is going to get on the right track this year. They got like that thirty year old coach. I think I'm older than he is as their head coach out there. Uh, I like the Rams to take care of the Colts. I just, the Colts, man, I don't know what they're doing. I think Pagano wants to get fired. It's it's really odd what's going on there. It's like they're not even trying. I'm going to take the Colts. Oh, uh, look at this guy in St. Angeles. I think they. Upsets I think they take this game. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I'm feeling Ty is going to have a couple of huge plays, and the Rams haven't shown me any reason to really believe in them. I, I know that they have a, a, a few new weapons, but it's a new regime. It's a new mindset. They're ready. They're in Los Angeles for their second year. They got the first year jitters out of them. They're back, baby. The Rams. Watch out for them. <laughs> we'll see. Advantage Griffin. Uh, Carolina in San Fran taking on your Wynum Dynum 49ers. Yeah, my San Francisco 49ers. Uh, the Panthers, man, Cam looking to bounce back this year. Lots of people picking the Panthers to win the NFC South over the Falcons. There are quite a few. They think Cam's going to bounce back. They got Kelvin Benjamin back. They drafted the stud Christian McCaffrey. Yep. However, oh boy. Can I have you've had like 12 upset specials. <laughs> yes. I'm taking another upset special. That's a new day in San Francisco oh, as well. Lots of new days lots nationwide of new days, here. Man. It's a new day on <laughs> September 10th. I like Kyle Shanahan. He again, new mindset, new regime, whole new philosophy of how to do football up there. Hmm. Uh I, Brian Hoyer, I think it's going to have a monster year this year. Watch out for Brian Hoyer. Oh boy. First time anyone's ever said that and meant it in a good way. So, <laughs> Brian Hoyer and my San Francisco 49ers are going to upset Cam Newton in the Carolina Panthers. I like the Niners. I'll take the Panthers on the road. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Advantage the wins. Seattle at Green Bay taking on the Packers. Ooh, another sexy matchup This here. is Look a very this. sexy. A 425. Buddy. This could have been the 830 in my opinion. Yeah, this but. is a nice game. You know, of course, the Cowboys have to play at 830. Yeah. Who else would play? Right. Uh, Seahawks, at, this could be an NFC championship preview. High caliber. May, maybe so. Lots of teams picking these two teams from the, uh, you know, it's Seahawks, Packers, Falcons. That seems to be the NFC picks from what I'm seeing from the so-called experts that aren't named the Winds or Radio Griff. Indeed. Uh, myself, though, too, I picked the Packers. I think Aaron Rodgers going to have a big year this year. Oh, yeah. Uh, got Jordy. Uh, I back at full speed, basically, I think. Devontae Adams, Devontae Randall Adams. Cobb. They had the number 88 running back. Ty, Ty Montgomery, Montgomery back yeah. there. I, I think uh, the Packers are going to... It's in Lambeau, man. Aaron Rodgers ain't w- losing the first game in Lambeau. Although he did shave the porn stash. Oh, did I'm he? a little oh, concerned oh, about wait, that. wait, wait, That's breaking news. This is breaking news. Oh, no. His Samson-like powers have been disabled. Oh, no. I have Aaron Rodgers on my fantasy team. I'm hoping that won't hurt him. So I'll stick with the Packers. I, I, I don't, I'm a Niners guy. I don't like the Seahawks. Russell yeah. Will, and Russell Wilson's turned into this weird dude now. Ever since he got with Ciara. Yeah. He's, he was like at the, the uh, Mayweather uh, McGregor f- uh, fight. Like all looking weird. Like very unlike Uh-oh. Russell, like with hats on sideways. Is he going these... Kaepernick weird on it, us? I'm, I don't know, man. Oh boy. I don't know. Watch out. Uh, distraction, maybe. Distraction, Russell Wilson. You think he's been puffing on the devil's lettuce out there in Seattle? Is that what? Sure. <laughs> I like the Packers in this game. I, I do too, man. I don't think there's any reason the Packers lose their first game. Both, Both are correct. correct. Sunday night, the New York Giants, man. I, you know, there's a lot about this team that I'm not really sure about. And because they're an NFC East rival, uh, they play the Cowboys really well. And Zeke Elliott, this will be the only game he plays for the next several. So I'm going to take the Giants on the road still. What, are, what do you think about this matchup? Yeah, uh, the Giants are one of those teams where some people are saying no way they make the playoffs. Other people saying they're going to the Super Bowl. Wow. You know how the Giants, every like five years, they have that year where they yeah. you, no one picks them and they make a run. And some a people Disney are, movie year. Right. Yeah. <laughs> some people are claiming this is one of those years. I don't know, man. I, Odell, I think, has kind of become a head case a little bit. I'm not totally buying it. And uh, I, Zeke, I think, is going to look to show out in his one game he has. 
the play before the suspension. Yeah. So I, I like the Cowboys oh boy. to take care of the Giants in the Big D this Ooh. Sunday night. I, you know what? I, <sighs> Advantage Griffin. Oh, boy. Hold on. We got a special guest referee in the building here. Oh, man. The, the voice. voice of Atlanta traffic. Bop, 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 bop. With the very latest on Hurricane Irma, which has affected this schedule. It's going to rain. You know, the Bucks and Dolphins game has been postponed to mid-November. I heard that. Lots of fantasy implications. So now they're going to have to play like 16 weeks straight, right? Straight games. Wow. A week one nope. by. So week one by. Oh, dude. Yeah, it's going to be a long season for those I two mean, teams. I they get paid millions of dollars. They're going to have to work for 16 weeks straight, man. The struggle man. is real. The struggle is real. You know what? Football lives matter, in my opinion. I do. And we're seeing a lot of this drama already begin in South Florida. Chris, I was looking at the Google Maps going on and it's red all the way at like 9 30 last night it was crazy but before we get to hurricane irma we only have two more matchups two monday night games we get two monday night games in week one the the flooded pre-former saints traveling up to minnesota to take on the conquering vikings what I like say the, you? The, the saints are done it's over they're trying to like they got old guys drew Brees and <laughs> ap <Old guys. laughs> i mean come on who else they have they don't know they got mark ingram who's Bru- uh, Brees throwing the ball to he, well, he doesn't have Sneed. He's on suspension. Sneed's out. They traded Cooks to the Pats, right? Yeah. Well, who's he throwing the ball to? That's a good point. AP, though, you know, he, he wants to stick it to the Vikings, apparently. Mm. Stick? Is that a pun there, maybe? I uh, like what you did is, there. Yeah, I just caught that myself. <laughs> I think Minnesota's going to be a pretty good football team this year. Well, they uh, have Sam Bradford, one right. of the best quarterbacks of all time. One of the best quarterbacks time. in all the league. So uh, I like the Vikings. <laughs> I think they're going to take care of business. I'm going to take the Saints on the road. Advantage Griffin. You're p- taking like every road team this I, I want to go down in, in the annals of history <laughs> as the most shock jockery jock <laughs> in all of the fake news world here. Chargers at Broncos. The the Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah, I'm very confused by all these moves. play a stadium moves. that has like 20,000 seats in it or yeah. something. A <laughs> soccer stadium. So yeah, exactly. It's really odd. They're playing Denver. Uh, the big note on this game is, is that the play-by-play announcer is going to be a woman. Oh, boy. Beth Moens, I think, along with Rex Ryan, former Bills coach we were talking about earlier. That's awful. So we got the Chargers at Broncos. I like Denver. I'm not sure who their quarterback is. Yeah, is that uh, awesome? By the way, what, what's what a that lucky about? guy, man. What's, what's going on there? He's How's like, that guy keep getting jobs? It's amazing, dude. He gets paid for, for being a terrible it's quarterback. It's like the voice of Atlanta traffic, man. You, know, you can't he, keep him down. He always bounces back. He always <laughs> bounces back. You bring on a hurricane, he boards it up, and he's good to go. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take the Chargers on the Look road. Every road team. Advantage Griffin. I feel like week one is one of those weeks where road teams have a legitimate chance to do we some upsets. We saw the other night with the Chiefs taking care of the Pats. This is true. Oh, man. So we'll be back next week to uh, see how far ahead at Radio Griff is. Hey, of go the take care here. of your crying baby back there, Wins. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. You know, daycare is too expensive nowadays. Inflation and gold prices. The Bitcoin hasn't quite gotten to where I need it to be. So I'm, I'm, I'm struggling right coin. now. I, I'm into that. <laughs> You're not, my baseball cards aren't selling for what they used to be. <laughs> my Mattingly isn't in mint condition anymore. Oh. So, But I'm going to sell all my Salem stock this weekend. And, and hopefully recoup some of my losses because of Irma. But we're going to check back. We'll get back to this next week live. Follow this man on Twitter. He's got a lot to say, at Radio Griff, and find his personal account and troll him there. Oh, no. And, of course, as always, great to have you in studio, Griff. Yes, sir. Ah, good for Radio Griff. He's got the best of the wins in week one. As of Tuesday, September 12th, Griffin, 8-8. Eight and eight. The wins, 6-10. and 10. Week two, Straight ahead, we'll have to see if the winds can get back on the saddle and win this race against that Radio Griff. Stay with us. Experience the Southern Sisters Radio Show uncensored and unfiltered on Facebook. Find us at Southern Sisters with Jenny Earhart. I'm in Wind's World, and I love it. Hey, hey, it's your friendly voice of Atlanta traffic, Chris Monroe, on Twitter, at Atlanta Traffic. And check out the work I'm doing with my foundation, the Gift of Music Foundation giftofmusic.org that's giftofmusic.org have an unused musical instrument sitting around a guitar wind instrument or brass instrument you haven't played in years then gift it to the gift of music foundation we'll refurbish it and get it to a kid or program in need for more information giftofmusic.org it must be true because i heard it on the radio it must be true it must be true Back in Wentz World with a pretty uh, 
impromptu meeting here with the voice of Atlanta traffic, Mr. Chris Monroe. We are in special hurricane and now tropical storm Irma watch. Wall-to-wall coverage, more than you can ever stand. I think the... The biggest part of the lead that's been buried is that Mother Nature is a ruthless bitch. Yes, she is. She does what she wants. She takes what she wants, and that's that. Oh, she she ain't gonna take no. She's just mm-hmm. gonna she's gonna say let it happen. Chris, I'm over it. I am over the rigmarole, the media blowing this out of proportion. Ugh. We got t- people talking about pressure systems, highs, lows, mids, the good, the bad, the ugly, and here I am. Stuck in the middle of all of this hyperbole and exaggeration, and I'm over it, and I just wish everybody would just chill. We we have nobody here in the building right oh, now. It's no, I mean, not only in the building, but the whole city is deserted. It's it's shut down. I, I saw a tumbleweed on my way to work today. Uh, well, this is what happens when literally this morning you take 80% or more of the traffic, literally millions of people that we took off of the roads today, all in preparation of a tropical storm that may see wind gust upwards of 50 miles an hour and some heavy rain. Yeah, and Irma decided to head westbound. She's in uh, Babalama right now. Is she That's not? actually it can actually mean bad things for Atlanta because we're on the east side. Whenever you're on the east side of a system, it's usually worse. But I will agree with you, and I was watching some of the coverage yesterday, and I literally, I never watch uh, local TV or TV in general, but I flipped on an ABC and I watched the uh, I watched the Falcons pull one out of their behind uh, at the very end. Oh, they deserve to lose that game. Yeah, they deserve. The they were trying to give it away. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so I turned over and ABC just ah uh-huh, yes, it's going downhill from here. And just all of the the talk about hyperbole and and the you know st- and look, granted, if you live in Tampa St. Pete, you live in Naples, you lived on the coast in Florida. You needed to get out of the way of the hurricane. Probably a good idea. Sure. You know, I mean, to, to make preparations. But everything is like, and I was talking to somebody about this in the hall a few minutes ago. Every It's either all or nothing. It's either, you know, and and is it that we are so inclined now to worry about lawsuits or we're trying to protect our butts in some way? You know, I mean, what is it? Why is everything seems so over the top these days? Is it ratings? Is it what? Is it all the above? I don't know. I think it's the uh, the two R's: ratings and revenue. Ratings and well, yeah, that these true. TV stations are just chasing after, at the risk of making society worse off than it actually is. And the the job of the media, how I learned in uh, in school, was to inform of factual evidence, not to instill fear and drive agendas, right? And this is one of the reasons why journalism is dead. And this includes meteorologists. Last night, we were watching 11 Alive, and they literally had a woman on there who is a storm tracker say to a camera, you know, I had no idea that Hurricane Chasers actually existed. You are a storm tracker. The fact that you didn't know that is scary. (laughs) And then second of all, don't admit it. Never admit that you don't know something that's, crucial about your job well there's two things that go on when you and they call this wall-to-wall coverage and the whenever you see you know then they preempt everything they preempt your soap operas your sports games judge judy judge mr judge joe brown mm-hmm. maury you know all you of it. are the father you are the father so <laughs> all of that gets preempted for for local news coverage and the problem is is when you go wall-to-wall it exposes two things. One, that you have to have something to say when they turn the mic on and the camera to you. So you have to fluff it up a little bit. And it exposes people like that, that in the heat of the moment don't know how to vamp or do something. And they say things like that. Yeah, it's awful. And here we are. It's Monday. And apparently tomorrow is going to be the worst of it. Five yeah. to seven inches of rain. Yeah, tonight into tomorrow. And look, I was here when we had, um, when the great blizzard came through in 93. Oh, wow. I drove to and from Atlanta, no problem. Okay, it was it was bad, but I drove to and from Atlanta with no problem. Um, I was here when Opal came through. Do you remember that? I vaguely remember that. Okay, so we got hurricane force winds in Atlanta. We lost a bunch of trees in, in our yard, and we were without power for a couple of days. You heard the generators going, and in Life went on. I mean, it's it's one of those things you prepare for, but it's, you know, and, and I was at the store yesterday and just seeing the panic and the fact that I, I make the turn down the bread aisle and there is not one loaf of bread left. What is it about carbs? I that, don't. This just reveals our addiction dairy. to carbs. No, it's car. It's like milk and bread. There's no milk and there's no bread, and I don't understand that. And, and so when your will. power goes out and you can't store the milk at a safe temperature, 
What are you going to slam milk? We all know how, how easy that is on the digestive system when you drink a half gallon of milk in but 10 lactose. minutes. Lactose. <laughs> yeah. So I, look, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I just, I don't understand the human psyche and so much of it has been cultivated and cultured by the media. And some people still just hang on the media's every word when right. it's so easy today to go on and look at the information for yourself, derive your own hypothesis and conclusion, just like a, a project in school, you know, to come up and say, you know, it's like a checklist. Do I need to get my family out of harm's way? Yes right. or no? OK. And you just kind of go down the flow chart. Are we do we have enough water and supplies for a couple of days of inconvenience? Not let's let's put it, you know, if, if we have to eat canned soup for a couple of days, it's inconvenient. Some people don't even have that. I go back to my travels across the world, and heaven forbid we lose electrical power for a day or two. It sucks. I mean, it's horrible. You know, nobody likes it, but it's not the end of the world. And I, I saw this report last night on the social medias about a couple bands of robbers driving around to different neighborhoods, knocking on doors, robbing people at gunpoint. And the fact that people are doing this during an emergency, it's just it's just terrible and awful. And shame on them. This is not the walking dead. This is not our future for the rest of mankind's life as we know it. This is a time to band together and not be those people because you know you're going to get caught eventually. This is not going to be the end of days where it's, well, a police departments matter no more. There's no rule of law. The court systems have been thrown out. It's complete anarchy and, and uh, vigilante justice. That's so despicable. But you know what? In my mind, the media is no better. They're holding us hostage. They're keeping us from doing what we actually want to do. And people are just as complicit in this. The fact that we're so reliant, like you said, on everybody telling us what we think instead of doing the research for ourselves, we're just as at fault as the people that we're listening to. Well, and I think it's the people that are that are go, you know hanging on the media's every word. And I think part of the reason the media is doing this is because let's be honest. I think local TV news is going to die. I think it's eventually going to die because it's very expensive to put on that product. You know, we have 78 reports and then they, they put 78 little boxes on the screen. You know, we, we're fanned out all over Metro Atlanta. Yeah, it's like Hollywood Squares. Yeah, yeah. And, and channel, not even Hollywood Squares. You can't even see them if you don't have a 93-inch TV. Right. My, I went widescreen, so one of their faces is like cut off halfway. Right. All the way. So, I mean, it's it's to the point where the sensationalism has just gotten out of control just because... And this really started with TV news. Go back and watch some some clips of TV news from the 70s and 80s. It was very much matter of fact. It was just it was it was much more about journalism. And that's what I grew up with. Right. And then as the technology in the 90s started to progress and, you know, just because we have a live truck, we have to go out at five o'clock in the morning, set up a live shot in front of the target, which won't be open for four hours. But in four hours, we're reporting, you know, and it's just it's this silly over the top. And it's just gotten so much worse now. And not to mention going back to the name of this now. Now tropical storm. Can we find a different way to identify? Because for the three people left in the world named Irma, <laughs> this has been a rough couple weeks. Well, look, my my grandmother's name was Ion, and my uh, my on my parent on my mom's side and my dad's side, uh, his mom, well, both eyes. Her, her name was Irene. How many eyes oh, are boy. there? Yeah, so there was Irene. India. What? A few years yeah, back. we had Hurricane Irene. Yep. Yeah, and so, then Harvey three four weeks ago. Now you know. Not too many Harveys left in the world either. But the, for the people, even if your last name happens to be Harvey, you're getting that second look of like, mm. I don't know, man. I mean, I who knows? It's something that they've been doing for decades and they decades. They should call them numbers. Hurricane 437. Hurricane 445. That way you don't have to go, oh, wait, wait, was this 437 or 438? I can't. You know, you can do just like our social security numbers. I right? guess. I don't know. I, I don't know that I disagree with the the. The personification system. of a storm? I don't know. It's like people that name their dogs human names. It bugs me. It's like dogs should be named Rover, well, not maybe, like Meredith well, or the, something. You the, know what the, I mean? Then, like it's too human. That's my sister's name. Then why do we, you know, what we should do is uh, name them like sports team. You know, Hurricane Thunderbird. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or like a military aircraft. Right. You know, Apache. Something cool like that. You know what I mean? No, I guess for me, the whole naming thing is down on my list other than just the way that people react to it. Because the problem is, is that most people are not prepared for 12 hours of disruption in their life, much less 12 days. And then there's the disconnect, right? Because as we saw three or four years ago with, with Snowmageddon, when Atlanta looked like the walking dead, people stuck in their cars, you oh, know, yeah. it, it was absurd. So now we're in this limbo of, well, how should we respond because if we underprepare, for a lack of a better term, screwed, 
But if we over prepare, we're going to be the we're brunt gonna, of every we're single crying, joke. Crying wolf and, and the yeah, and, and, schools are closed. Money is lost. People with kids that don't have planned daycare, you know, all of a sudden Cobb County schools are closed Monday and Tuesday and parents can't necessarily call out to their jobs or work from home. You know, what are you supposed to do? Well, you can alter your work hours to, you know, probably work from a different time. Well, you could some some people have the uh, the privilege and opportunity to do said thing, but there are some people that are nine to fivers, and you right. know they're pushing papers, um, yeah. stapling TPS reports, the cover <laughs> sheets. So I mean, it's not exactly yeah. easy for everybody to do that. No, it it, it is. It's definitely a um, it's it's definitely a burden because a lot of a lot of the schools, of course, that we serve with the Gift of Music Foundation are part of the after school program, and those right. parents rely on that because they can't afford daycare and there's nowhere and the last thing they want their kid to do is go home at two thirty or three o'clock in the afternoon to an empty house right they don't get home until seven or eight or nine o'clock at night so sure. now it's i think we need to come up with a better way but i i i agree with you it is a but i try to put myself in the place of a mayor or a governor that's trying to make that call like in houston there were no mandatory evacuations right they they chose to because they didn't realize that the flooding was going to be like apocalyptic 60 inches of rain or right. whatever it was you know so how do you in, in that's that's a very good point i mean i just at some point we have to put more responsibility on the vast majority of people for their own personal responsibility you know, we need to give you the information. We believe this is going to be a bad storm. We believe that life could be in danger. And then you decide whether or not you get your, your family out. For those who are really infirmed, the sick, the elderly, the people who have no other way out, you get them out of harm's way. You put your resources there. And you know what? If you're a, a well-to-do person and you chose to stay there and you drown, that's your that's on you. You know what really gets me? This is a gear grinding portion of this segment. <laughs> this, to me is the epitome of apathy, ignorance, and malevolence, in my opinion. Dogs and cats that were stranded back at their stead while their owners or caretakers left, right? So people that left their dogs tied to trees, left their cats in the house, oh, we don't have room for them, or, you know, uh, it's just too much to deal with, we got to get out of here. Like, that to me is murder. And I'm not a PETA person, but I also think... You were given this gift of an animal, mm -hmm. right? Because animals are gifts. They they're are. therapeutic. They're, they're like people light, especially cats, because they're so independent. But the fact that people left these animals stranded to fend for themselves and to eventually drown is so despicable to me that it made, it made me borderline cry last night when oh, I thought about that. Listen, I, and, and I am such a huge animal lover, and, and I'm not a PETA guy either, but I do love animals. And like, if a boat came for me and they said, "I'm sorry, you can't take your animal," I'd be like, I'd be like "Well, I'm uh, I'm staying here with I my animal. Guess I'll be here. Yeah, you know, because I'm not I'm not going to do that. But as I've often said, I think there's a special place in hell for people who abuse or in any other way do not look after the elderly animals and children. It's it's very sad. Unfortunately, storms like this bring out a lot of, and it was what you were talking about, looting and and uh, people, you know, taking advantage. And here's eighty three dollar bottle of water, and here I'm going to go door to door and you know house jack or you know whatever, right? Uh, strong arm robbery, poor people that are huddled up in their house. You know, it's a special place in hell for those people. I don't I don't know that you ever get away from that because I think there's evil in the world that you you just have to be prepared. The first sign, in my opinion. Even those who thought maybe, ah, it's not going to be as bad. It's the media blowing. So there is the other side of the coin. It's just the media blown out of proportion because we've been exposed to that for so long that cry wolf mentality comes into play. And it probably did for a lot of people in Texas and in Florida. So here we are, the other side of that coin of, ah, should we, should we leave? Ah, whatever, whatever. But now I think if you're charged with being a good steward of those around you, whether it be human life, animal life, you got to get those people and pets out of that situation and then worry about the other things later. Forget about the bread and the dairy. Make sure you got enough booze to get you through. I've or, never or the, understood the, uh, the the milk and bread, man. I want yeah, Doritos. Yeah, why are liquor stores and, packed? Right? I, I feel like it, no matter what time, we could be in a churning economy, a wartime economy. You know, jobs are going. The, right. the, the factories are busting out. You know, we're overtime, boys. <laughs> yeah. Um, or you could be in a, you know, an economic collapse like we saw in 09. The one thing that remains the same is booze sells, man, during good and bad. People good and bad. are still getting that bottle. To me, it, it, it all boils down to personal responsibility. And yeah. most people are not prepared in any way in their life for anything. And you know what? 
I have to say that I'm kind of guilty of that, too. And I think these type of situations we have to let I me mean, what would happen if solar flare, a solar flare, one of the what do they call them? The EMP? uh, EMPs. Yeah. yeah. What if that happened and everything shut down? Gas pumps, uh, power grid, everything. You would Internet. see the worst of people. You yeah. talk about people being hungry after church. Because they haven't eaten in three right, hours. Right. You give a, a, a an American. I'm just going to label it American because we're used to comfort, and there's we're nothing wrong with that. Very comfortable. But we yes. are. We can go to McDonald's, spend three dollars, and be full for five. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I literally think you give it two days, and the worst of the worst of all of who we are. I'm not saying the worst of people, but the worst of who all of us are would rear its ugly head. And you talk about upheaval. Look, you see two people fighting over a cheap Chinese TV on Black Friday. Oh, okay? Can you imagine if, if their kids are hungry? Right. I'm cutting somebody's throat over a jar of peanut butter. Right. If so, my kid is hungry, somebody's dying. And look, you know, a lot of times we hear on, on some of our stations and others, especially on the talk stations, you know, you hear these uh, survival food kits and all this. You, know, you might think, ah, that's kind of over the top. But not really, man. Yeah. One of the things that our grandparents taught us, and for some of us great-grandparents, depending on how old you are, is that... From the turn of the century and up through the Depression, they learned how to can things. And one of the things that my grandparents always did is we always had, you know, you always brought in the crop of green beans and tomatoes and okra and corn and fruit, and you had all of this canned goods. So we always had a freezer stocked full of stuff, right? and we always had a whole pantry full of canned goods that you could at any time eat in case that you didn't have food in the house. Right. And that's something that we've really lost. And you know what? Again, I am one of the biggest offenders. I'm a single dude. I can order anything I want from my phone now, and it shows up in 30 or 40 minutes at, at my doorstep. Right. I'm used to that. But we have to get back, whether you're single, whether you have a family of 10, whatever, you've got to have a, a plan, a personal plan in place to get out of harm's way if need be. Help those that you're in charge of, whether it be your elderly parents or relatives or or people that you look after, your pets. You know, so I, I would really think that uh, that people should should look at that here over the next um, the next couple of weeks. What can I do to prepare for the next Irma, Snowmageddon, EMP, civil unrest? We're all so comfortable. We haven't seen civil unrest in this country in a long time. And isn't it great for those of us, and I know you're probably excluded from this somewhat, but I live about an hour away from the city. No, and, I do not live that far away. And, and I got to tell you, I, I complain, I bitch about traffic. Ah, oh, I hate sitting in. But you know what? When I really think about it, I think about the fact that I am so far away from when when the ish hits the fan ah. that I, I would feel more comfortable out there than I do down here. Lots of gun owners. I don't depend on police. Like, if I hear stirring, I'm grabbing my weapons. I have the high ground. No, we uh, the police were never meant to be able to protect every incident, every situation, every second of the day. There's not enough of them. It's, right. The numbers don't add up. So if you're not, and look, I'm not a gun guy at all. I know a bunch of my friends that love guns. I mean, they're into guns. They've got collections. They've got stuff from the Revolutionary War and the Civil War and World War One and Two, and they collect stuff. Great. Not my thing. But I do, I am armed, and I do have a gun for protection of myself and my family. That's another reason why when you drive through these ritzy-ditzy neighborhoods here in Buckhead, when they have signs that, that depict them as leftist Hillary voters, I'm like, oh, that would be the first house that I intrude because I know you're unarmed and I know that you your little sign about it's all love here. No room for hate here, which also yeah. means no room for weapons. It's it's it's, <laughs> you know? it's about it, it's, you're my it's, first target. Oh, God, not to get too far off the subject, but it's it's, it's like, really not off the subject. It, though. It's like it's the not. gun free zone of a school. Yeah, there's you know? no, well, there's no shootings that can actually happen there because so, everybody so here, knows. Here, here's a guy. Or, here's a guy comes up because oh, <laughs> coming up. I got my gun. I got my gun. I can't oh, do it here. Crap. It's a gun free zone. It's a gun There's free a zone, sign. damn it. <laughs> it's sign, a sign. sign everywhere. They sign. I mean, that's it. And and th- look, if there is civil unrest, these neighborhoods around Buckhead are a mere stone's throw away from the lower socioeconomical parts true. of the city. I'm not making this about race or color or anything like no, that. No, but it is about truth. And and we have to stop this whole politically correct nonsense of, you know, trying so hard. And see, you even had to say, you even I had qualify to, that caveat. I know. Because, but because the people will jump to I, conclusions. I know. And I, I'm well aware of the fact that there are way more white people on welfare and government assistance than there are anybody else. It's not about that. 
if I see some guy banging on my door and he has light skin, I treat him no differently than I would if it had somebody with darker skin. It's it's all about or the no way skin. people carry. Actually, if they have no skin, I'm very concerned. I'm very concerned at that point. It's look, it's it's about the way people carry themselves, and it's um, you know, it, it it's just a time that we need to reflect on a lot of these things. And I, I you know, it's it's one. I'm glad that we've had this segment. We've been able to talk about this, and hopefully, you know, this will get people thinking because so often, what's the most important thing in people's lives? The latest <laughs> yeah. sports. And I'm, sure, not, and I'm guilty of the sports thing. You know, look, I'm not. And and and. If sports is your thing, whatever that you're into, I love cars, you know, and I can really get and once in a while I can get 80 or, you know, totally OCD on on a certain thing that I'm into. But you have to pay attention to life, too. It can get away from you if you if you let the preparedness of life get away from you. And I think that's what a lot of people have done. We just expect people are going to come save us. And here we are on the 11th of September, the 16 year anniversary. And what better reminder of maybe we should kind of be prepared just in case just in because you never know just be prepared and this is the thing about the store visits right why not buy an extra case of water they're three dollars for like 24 bottles of water if push comes to shove you could ration those out you could drink two of those but yeah you'd be dehydrated but you wouldn't die for you you'd be able to live a couple months or get one of those life straws that way you could literally go out to the closest pond or that puddle of nonsense in your backyard and drink out <laughs> and of drink, that right. and stay alive until it gets figured out. I think yeah. the amount of, and everybody's guilty of this, the amount of money we spend going out to eat every week. Oh my God. I'm, think, yes. Think how much money. Uh, we just, we uh, we ate out at Mex- a Mexican restaurant. And granted, we don't drink when we go out for two reasons. One, because it's uber expensive. And two, I have to drive. So it doesn't make sense. I can yeah, just you got drink a young the house. kid, and you've yeah, you yeah. have to be a responsible. Parent. Save twelve dollars by right. not doing that, plus any potential DUI and all that nonsense because the cops are out to get you, whether you know it or not. Catch you riding dirty. Yeah, catch you right. Hey, any reason to pull you over, man? That's more revenue for the state. We spent like forty dollars, man. I know, and I know it doesn't sound like a lot to some of these people listening right now, but forty dollars when you really think about what you could buy for forty dollars. I a couple of years ago, back when I was still using Quicken, okay, it's kind of like QuickBooks for your personal finance. So I used it for years, all the way back to like the DOS version, I think. So I decided to do a a run of like two thousand five to two thousand fifteen of what I had spent in takeout delivery. Can I guess? Go ahead and guess. So ten years. Ten years. And you were single throughout this whole time, yes, right? Yes, I've always been single. Okay, so $17,000. $53,000. Good God, that's what somebody makes in a year. I know. Well, somebody in radio, that's what you make in three years. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's my three-year salary. No, oh, goodness. Dude, I mean, when you start to really be accountable for what you spend. And look, I remember growing up, it was a treat. Our dad would take us out to Red Lobster. Oh, I That's, love those Cheddar Bay Biscuits, listen, baby. But this is even back when Red Lobster was, was like the high end. really good. Yeah, I mean, creme that's, de la creme. Yeah, and he... He had like a diner's club card, and once nice. in a while we could go out on the on the company dollar. They would say, take your family out as a, you know. and But that was a once in a while thing. We always ate at home. Eating out was kind of a treat, you know, and it's so easy. And now you got all these apps. You got Uber Eats and, and DoorDash and Google Delivers and all this stuff, which is great. And trust me. I love the convenience. Oh, I love it, too. But by the time you put on the delivery fee and the processing fee and the tip and all that, it's even more expensive than if you were to go out. Um, you know, I don't know. It's at some point, I, I think it really started me because uh, last night was the first night that I cooked in a long time. I actually made I bet dinner. you felt good about yourself, too. I actually kind of did. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was like, wow, I need to do this more often. And you also know what's going in your food. Yeah, true. You know what I mean? Not to say that I'm one of these, you know, oh, it has to be all natural and organic and all this stuff, but it does help to kind of know what you're putting into your temple. Sometimes I think about like all the stuff that restaurants use, and I worked at a restaurant for over 10 years, and I know what goes on in the back. Look, here's the reality check, folks. When they drop your food on the floor, they don't cook you a new anything. It's just scraped up. And they kind of blow it off, dust it off, and they put a bun on top of that sucker. Hey I, look, I worked in a restaurant, too. And none of that bothers me. <laughs> Pick up. Pick it up. Pick it up. <laughs> drag a god, drag a burger through the god. Yeah. Char- well done. <laughs> I want it well done, but not burned. That's impossible. Continue. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, I, I don't know. It just all goes back, I believe, to really kind of taking stock. And you and I have talked a lot about this through you know, social media and oh god you know, forbid that god forbid the servers fall 
during this time of civil unrest or some uh, some some pulse that takes away <laughs> our you know our, our our valuable commodity of social media time, myself included. I, I literally wonder if I put the amount of time into investing in my future, whether thought wise, jotting down ideas, than I do just sitting and scrolling through the lives of others. And it's all pretend. Or anyway. just reading a book. Or reading and a learning book. something. Something. Even yeah. if it's poetry, something to focus on, something beautiful to focus on. Right. How much better, not only my life, but those around me, how much better their lives would be because there's enrichment in that. We have to fight. And I think this goes back to the preparedness thing. We have to fight lazy because I think humans are naturally naturally geared to what I mean. Why did people come up with the things that they've come up with? You know, the cotton gin uh, because it's easier. You know, it's easier than sitting there and doing it by hand. Yeah. You know, uh, it's easier to drive a car than it is to hitch up a horse across you know it's an automatic transmission so much easier than a stick yeah of course so why does i mean they say invention and you know, necessity is the mother of all invention and that's true but what is really ne- what is necessary i mean air conditioning is not is not necessary i would probably die now without it now that you know the difference sure right. yeah but if you don't know any different you you just don't know any different which reminds me i was this morning i was taking a shower and i thought man those folks on the walking dead for years they stumbled around the South. We're talking about <laughs> when it's like 100 degrees in the South and yeah. they're all sweaty and nasty. And I just thought, and I know it's a show, so somebody's yelling at it. It's a stupid TV show. Uh, but think about it. This is the lives of people in countries that we may never visit. And some people in this country that don't have the, the, the money to sustain that or just the resources or, or infrastructure and in their housing to do that. And I just think, man, if it ever happens and we're out of power for two weeks the mayhem that we will not see because we won't have tv to watch it on (laughs) i mean we would have to get back down to brass tacks which is okay you take that flank i'll take this flank and the women and children you're upstairs stay in this stay in this room here's a gun if anybody comes in this room it isn't us that's right. Unless they, unless they knock this amount of times. But most people you know don't I mean? have the stones for that. This, the, in, you have our, to. You know, I know, but it's, it's you know, I was watching, uh, a lot, you know, flipping around yesterday during the, the wall-to-wall Hurricane Irma coverage. The fear-mongering. Yeah, the fear-mongering. Uh, Alaska, the, the last frontier, and watching these dudes up there that, like, live off the land. And it's whatever they trap, hunt, fish, kill, and store for the winter is what they have to eat. Yeah. You know, by God. Kind of, kind of gives you incentive to not be lazy. Well, it does, and it's it's very easy to be lazy, and I fight it too, man. I, I I'll be on the way home, and I'm in my car, and I'm tired, and I say, I'll just order chin chin again tonight. I'll mm. just order Chinese again. And chin chin always gives me two chins by the time I'm done eating. Oh, it. dude, listen, I've 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 I have put so much weight back on since I have been not eating. I've just got to find a healthy medium. I've got to be able to 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 eat fries once in a while, but not every day. Right. You know, and I've I've gotten lazy. Plus my Chick Fil A black card too isn't. Oh, that's, that's such a that's such a blessing and a curse. Oh man, double edged sword there that you carry with you, that's man. I, that would be something that I'm glad I, I I'm jealous that you have it. To be honest with you, but I'm also glad I don't have it because I would put on thirty pounds in two months. It's so good. Just because it's like, well, I'll just bring home Chick Fil A for the family, right? And every day, a little more lemonade here. A couple more waffle fries there. Oh, Dude, it's over. A dream, large dream cup. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. And you got a Sunday. Ugh. Not on Sunday, but you got a Sunday yeah, to right, eat. Yeah, right, right. But I just, man, that's the thing. And and I'm, I think this is overall, we've been ranting for over 30 minutes now. So to sum it up, preparedness, be smart. When when we go out, buy the extra thing of water or some some sort of way to sustain. If it happens, not saying it's going to, but it would be a good idea to not have to rely on your neighbor for food or water. You know, I think a lot of us look back at old video clips of things that have happened in our world. You know, whether it's the bombing of Hiroshima hmm. or something major. You know, we look sure. we look a hundred years ago or whatever. Nah, it couldn't happen it, now. It couldn't happen now. We have really been conditioned to feel. Isn't it weird? Don't you look at history sometime? You look at it, Through a and tunnel. it's almost like it's it's like in an alternate it's in a, universe. A different Earth. Yeah, yes, it's like it didn't really. You know, it's weird. And we, then we look at at all the plenty we have in America, and it's like, oh, that, that can't happen here again. But I think you're right, man. I think it's just about being pragmatic. 
being proactive and not waiting until 12 hours before the quote impending doom, whether or not it is or not. So, look, if you get the day off and your employer says, hey, don't come in today or you school has the day off or whatever, you can sit around and eat your, uh, you know, you can eat your rations and and watch TV or or play board games (laughs) or whatever. But, you know, don't don't depend on somebody else. And you know what? I have a feeling that a lot of, of of the listeners here probably already know that. Right. You know, I think the the people that are more dependent on government for everything in their lives are the ones that are going to be more dependent to think, well, they're going to come save me if it's bad. Yeah, right. No, they're not. Sure, sure. They'll be they'll be there with a yacht to pick you up in the floodwaters of Atlanta. No, yeah, just, not going to happen. Just just wipe your feet off before you get in. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it, man. And uh, Chris, these segments are not only fun but they're also practical. No, and I think I think we get out a lot of information to people that that honestly they wish they heard on a lot of other places. Yeah. You know, other major market radio stations. You know, I I really I think a lot of people think you know, I'd really love to hear this type of talk more, and you know, that's what your show brings to the to the table, and I think that's why you are gaining uh, as obvious uh, listeners, you know, uh, wherever you're on, man, and that's I'm pr- I'm pr- proud to be part of it. And if you feel like this message has benefited you in any way, feel free to follow the lead on your heart and donate to the Gift of Music Foundation, <laughs> giftofmusic.org. I love that, I, man. I got to tell you, man. When we're able to give to a foundation like the Gift of Music, it really makes me feel and think that, hey, this kind of organization is exactly what we need to feed because what you feed grows. This is the kind of organization that we need to feed because these kids, at-risk kids, kids in these neighborhoods with parents that more than likely not do depend on some sort of government funding and help from time to time, these are the kids that we need to reach and give them a life of their own apart from other people giving it and telling them, writing their story for them on their behalf. And it's not just because it's music. I mean, I think everybody, can, we all love music in some form, whether or not we have can carry one pitch or tune. Music still impacts our lives, Sure. whether or not you're a virtuoso and you can pick up a violin at four and play whatever. And that's not really the point. The point is. Is that and I've walked into some of these households with these kids and they're bright kids and they're they're energetic and God, they want something so bad. Yeah. And music is one of those things that just helps them to develop their entire brain. Yes. Left and right. Cognitive and, you know, the other side. Yeah, <laughs> Whatever yeah, yeah. the other side. No, I know yeah. what you're saying. The so, left and right brain. The right sure. brain. So it's it helps them develop that, whether or not they go on to be a musician at all, it has shown over and over again that that, you know, not only just learning to play a musical instrument, but um, academic aptitude, test scores, which is so big, you know, right. sure. and all of that. So, I mean, that's what we're doing, and and we're seeing the the fruits of our labor really start to uh, you know to, to take hold, and and it's really gratifying. I mean, it's a, and you've had a big part, obviously, uh, in helping out the foundation both personally and uh, and and through your show as well, and we appreciate that. Oh man, it's just such an honor to be a part of what you're doing. And I really do hope that people don't think this is a, a sermon, but it really is just a more of a conversation on, hey, these are great reminders on what's really important in life. And, and it's just those simple things in life that really do matter. Chris, man, always good to have you. we got to have you back next week. Maybe we'll look back on everybody, <laughs> the mass exodus back to Florida that's oh, sure that's going to happen. Place. Yeah, that's going to happen, and people are going to get down. And look, there's going to be some pretty catastrophic damage along the West Coast. I mean, from Naples up to... Fort Myers yeah, and on t- up into Tampa, Tampa St. Pete. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, so there, there's going to be damage, and our hearts and thoughts and prayers certainly go out to those people. But if you live, and I think somebody had said, I think the west coast of Florida hadn't taken a direct hit in like 80 or 100 years wow. because it's usually the east coast sure. that gets, you know, all the strikes. Right. So, I mean, our thoughts and prayers with them, but, you know, you know the risks. You know, here in Tornado Alley, we live at the tornado. If you live in L.A., you know that the San Andreas Fault may move six feet. And crazy liberals surround you. And so you well, got you to gotta know what, what you're around. You, you got, make your informed decision. It's it's one of those things we just can't stop, and it's terrible, and, and we want these people to be safe and, and to rebuild as soon as possible. Um, and that's why you got to be prepared. It's kind of like the people who live in those areas but choose not to buy flood insurance and then they're not covered Ugh. you know so anyway that's a whole nother but we'll we'll certainly revisit you know this next week and and see where we're at uh after tropical storm irma storm of the century storm 4387 checking out <laughs> 
KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. This is Jenny Earhart with Southern Sisters Radio, and I'm your Southern Sister. In case you didn't know, you can check us out every Sunday at 2 p.m. right here on KLRN. And I'd love to hear from you. Email me at radio at southernsistershome.com.